Hi there, it's Rob Sayer from On Stage Lighting. Welcome to a special screencast uh, on the use of Vexelworks Spotlight specifically for people coming from AutoCAD. I teach a number of CAD packages, including both Vectorworks and AutoCAD, and this is a relatively short video to help people make a head start learning Vectorworks on their own if they come from AutoCAD. Okay then, so here we are in the Vectorworks workspace. The good thing is if you come from an AutoCAD background or any professional CAD package, most of the things that you learned um, in general CAD uh, to draw things, tools that you used, uh, concepts like snaps, the idea of scale and the idea of uh, paper space, for example, in AutoCAD. All of these things are directly available in Vectorworks as well, the same as most professional CAD packages. This means that actually you have got quite a head start in learning Vectorworks Spotlight. You just kind of need to know where everything is. In this video, I'm not going to go into too much detail about specifics, you could just go and find these things by wandering around the interface and having a look. I also have a series of videos that are specifically targeted towards Vectorworks Spotlight, which people can use from a standing start with no experience of CAD. So you might want to use those as well. To start off with then, we'll just look at the interface. Now, if you're an AutoCAD user, the main part of the interface for Auto, many AutoCAD users is the command line. Well, in Vectorworks, there is no similar command line type interface. Instead, Vectorworks uses the tool palettes uh, up here on the right. You can see the basic palettes with the shapes like the rectangle, the line, double line, that sort of thing. Um, and also keyboard shortcuts. So if you hover over the tool, um, you'll also see that the keyboard shortcut uh, for a rectangle tool is 4. Uh, the shortcut that I use quite a lot is for the selection tool, uh, which is X, and I use that loads. Um, so you don't type in uh, in the same way in, in, in Vectorworks uh, apart from when you're typing in things like dimensions. So if we, for instance, were to pick a rectangle, we could pick the rectangle tool and we could start to draw a rectangle. And then uh, when I hit tab, you can see that uh, the, the uh, letter, a number is highlighted on this little dialog box. And then we could then type in our number. Then we hit tab again, a bit like you do comma in uh, AutoCAD and then we can type another number. That basically gives us a 1000 by 2000 rectangle. So when you're interfacing with Vectorworks, you spend quite a lot of time either using keyboard shortcuts or selecting tools. If you're not sure what the tools do, what I find quite useful is if you drop down to the bottom of the tool palettes, you'll find in Vectorworks there's lots of little tiny uh, triangular sort of uh, arrows. Usually there's something underneath them. If you click on them, we can on the, in the tool palettes you can say view tools as icons and text. What that does when you start off, it makes your tool palette um, a little bit more unwieldy because uh, you have to scroll up and down, but it does give you um, the text next to the icon itself. And if you're not, obviously a rectangle and a circle icon are really obvious, but some of the other ones you might not know what they are. For instance, I mean, now you see that that little icon is the mirror tool, that makes sense, but when you just saw it on its own, you might not have noticed what that particular tool was. The thing to do is to have a look down that tool palette and see which tools you recognize from AutoCAD. Most of the basic uh, professional CAD package tools are there, fillet and chamfer, uh, things like that, sort of thing you're used to using. Okay, the next part of this I just wanna talk about a minute is, is actually the units themselves. Now AutoCAD is supposedly unitless, isn't it? There's no reference to the units that you're using at any one time, although there is, uh, there are elements of the specific units and when I teach AutoCAD we teach in millimeters. Vectorworks is a lot more um, aware of the units and so you do need to set the units up. The units are set up under File, Document Settings and Units and then you can set things like uh, the millimeters, the degrees, the various other things. When you uh, do things in Vectorworks, you type in, you can for instance type in two different ways of typing in uh, a one meter distance. You can either type it as 1000, and then that will be 1000 millimeters, or you can type it as 1M for one meter. And Vectorworks kind of works this out, works out what you mean by 1M. So the idea of units is a little bit more front and center in using Vectorworks. The other thing about Vectorworks is it is quite cool in that it will do calculations while you are typing in dimensions and measurements and stuff. So 
For example, if I were to just draw a quick rectangle here, I haven't given it a size, but over here in the object info, which is like your kind of properties palette, it has the width here and the, and the height there. Now what I can do is I can add another thousand millimeters to that. And as you, you sort of see, as soon as I hit enter, it basically, I can also minus 50 millimeters. Um, there's things like that that um, Effectworks does quite well. Talking of units, this brings us quite neatly onto a specific one, which is the scale. Now, when we draw in model space in AutoCAD, we generally, it's drawn in one-to-one, -one, isn't it? One unit equals one uh, unit in world space. AutoCAD um, is kind of one-scaled like that. Vectorworks is different. Vectorworks has a different scale for different layers. Now, where we are at the moment, you can see uh, what looks like a paper, a piece of paper that we're drawing on. And you can turn this uh, piece of paper off and you can draw in one to one, the same as AutoCAD. Quite a lot of people in Vectorworks draw in a specific layer scale. And each layer itself has a different scale. That can be a bit tricky because if you start drawing different layers at different scales but they're part of the same drawing you might find you have issues with with the scale and stuff the the scale that we're drawing on in this uh, what would be the equivalent of model space here in this ca this case is 1 to 100 now i have this little scale icon here you might be able to see it you might be able to see it not see it on yours but um basically you can change the scale on a per layer basis it's just something to watch out for when you print you print out in the same way, you often print out in the same way as you print um, from paper space in AutoCAD. Um, and that's another element of Vectorworks which probably you should look into in, in further learning in other videos, which is uh, called sheet layers. But basically, this is kind of a piece of paper which we could draw to scale on this piece of paper, and then we could then create sheet layers or paper space um, layouts um, to, to, to fit the particular drawing and the printing we want to do. Talking of layers, the thing with Vectorworks is uh, different to AutoCAD is that there are two elements that are similar to layers in AutoCAD. The main element that would be a good equivalent of layers in AutoCAD, which is layers in AutoCAD are often used for different line types, different weights, different elements of the drawing, different um, line uh, types and colors, uh, ways of turning things off, ways of locking things. Layers are used for all of that in AutoCAD. In Vectorworks, there are two elements. The first element is called classes. Classes are kind of similar to layers, um, but they, they kind of don't really have any physical position in the drawing. They don't have a height. They don't have a layer um, order, if you, a draw order, if you like. Um, so classes is the first place that you go in order to create say all your seating in one element or all of your lantern types in one element or whatever. Vectorworks also has layers as well and the layers behave in a similar way to the classes so there's kind of like two quite similar tools which can be used for different things. That does sort of double the, your ability to turn things on and off, lock things and to create um, complexity in your drawing it also can be a bit confusing when you come from AutoCAD and you have simply used layers for that. The differences between these two layers and classes are over here um, on the navigation palette. The classes here, you can see I've got one class called Dimension and one called None. And then if I click to Layers, I've just got one design layer. So just remember there's two of those and if we'll look at those in the more in-depth videos. The third thing I want to just talk about quickly is blocks. In AutoCAD, we use blocks for things to replicate things over and over. So we might draw something that we create as a sort of an element. We might turn it into a block. This is a, some element, a projector or something. It might, we might turn it into a block. Vectorworks has blocks as well, but the blocks are called symbols. So instead of create block, we'd go create symbol. Similar kind of thing, um, we would uh, do, leave all the settings as we do when we're making blocks in AutoCAD, might go OK, um, send it to the drawing itself, a bit like we do with blocks, and it appears down here in the resource browser. So you can see that I can place these symbols and around the drawing. Moving on from blocks, 
or symbols in the case of Vectorworks. I just want to quickly talk a little bit about the specialist tools relating to lighting. As you know, AutoCAD doesn't have inbuilt stage lighting capabilities. Um, you can do stage lighting plans and do a lot of the work creating stage lighting plans in AutoCAD, but it doesn't do it in a kind of a knowing and native way. Vectorworks is different, which is why a lot of people in lighting use Vectorworks. Vectorworks has a lot of tools in order to be able to do lighting. So if you can't see things that look down in the left hand side here, I've got my tool sets. If you can't see things that look familiar to us in stage lighting, uh, a kit, hoists, truss, that kind of thing, it's probably because um, we're actually in a different workspace. So maybe we're in a workspace that belongs to architects or designers or whatever. So the way to do that is to basically to go to tools, right down the bottom of tools, go into workspaces, and you'll see a number of options here. Probably you might have fundamentals. If you've got the full package, which includes Spotlight, you should be able to flick to Spotlight, which is down here, which will then give you your um, individual lighting tools plus other ones as well, 3D tools and stuff like that. But the one here with the picture of the Fresnel on it is the one that has got the lighting tools in it. I've got videos on how to use all these specialist tools, but it just gives you an idea of um, how they can be used. If I wanted to use this symbol that I've just drawn as a lighting unit, I could actually insert it as a lighting unit onto my drawing by using the lighting instrument insertion tool. I can draw it into place, select this symbol, and then you can see there, that's just drawn another, um, another, another unit, but the point is this time, if I just delete these other two units, we can see here it says lighting device. If I just pull this out, we can see there is now, because I've inserted this symbol as a lighting unit, you can see there's lots of things here that are familiar to us, the type, the wattage, the purpose, the bits and pieces. Um, and if you know from AutoCAD, we had to set up all those attributes and stuff like that to, to make um, any kind of lighting element out of a block. This is kind of used a symbol to do the same thing, but Vectorworks knows that it's a lighting device and knows that it has a certain number of attributes that um, can be worked with. So it's probably about time you had a go with some stuff yourself. The last thing I would say before we close this video is that the difference, a big difference in the interface with between AutoCAD and Vectorworks is that in AutoCAD, once you've performed an operation, you need to perform, uh, tell AutoCAD you want to perform this operation again in order to stay, do that straight away afterwards. So for example, if we were to do it in AutoCAD, we would need to tell it we wanted to start a rectangle, then we'd make our rectangle, and then we'd either need to select the rectangle uh, via command line again, or we would um, just uh, hit enter and start another rectangle. Vectorworks stays on the tool you were on until you tell it not to. So once we've drawn a rectangle, the next thing we do is draw another rectangle. And in order to select the rectangle that we've drawn the first one, we could try and like select it, but that's just drawn us another rectangle. In uh, Vectorworks, what you need to do is go back to the selection tool, which is the top of the basic tool palette. So that's why I use X a lot. So we've say we've drawn several rectangles. We finished drawing our rectangles and we want to select them all, hit X, and then we can select them all up and then we can delete them. It's just a tiny difference in the workflow that seems really, really hard to get over when you make the transition between the two CAD packages. And I find that I have that problem now, even using both CAD packages. Okay, so that's about it. If you want to learn more about using Vectorworks Spotlight, then I have a load of videos on that. But hopefully this has given you a bit of a head start if you already come from an AutoCAD background. I'll see you again soon.